But there's a point in where respect goes out of the window. And it's just about who is the best in this division and in the world. And that is not you, Serena. That is me. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. I'm TK Trinidad, aka the Canadian Assassin, and I am not alone. She's the host of In Cat Retrust, plus one of the hosts and writers for Women's Wrestling Talk, Busy Lady. Please welcome Katrina Blake. Hey, hey, how are you, buddy? Hey, and she is a new host for Women's Wrestling Talk and co-host of KFAB Queen Podcast. Please welcome Alicia Salazar. Hi. Hey, and today we have an amazing show. Um, I'm, I'm going to give not my usual intro because I want to give this amazing woman her flowers. I, this show, she has been on the show several times and I feel like when people talk about this guest, they don't give her her flowers. They don't give her her respect. She's finally got that respect, but I want to give her her flowers right now. Like if you know her story or if you don't know her story, just definitely go and look it, uh, look it up. We have a plenty of interviews with her. Uh, she is the owner of Mission Pro Wrestling. So if you don't know that, you should definitely go and check them out and all women's a promotional company. She is a former NWA World Women's Champion. She does MMA and she's the current that's right, I said it. The current AEW Women's World Champion. Please welcome Thunder Rosa. Hola, that was, that was so sweet. I, it just like, you you brought me back to memory lane when I used to go to like LA and stay at my friend's house, I don't know, like three hours away from like your guys' studio and then just like driving in traffic, putting my makeup on <laughs> with one it's, of those titles and stuff. Like oh, I am super cute. so like proud of you. I am so happy for you. Um, because like we, we've been on this, I don't want to like put us in it, but we've been on this journey together, like all these steps and just seeing your, like, I'm getting like goosebumps and just seeing your progress and just seeing your hard work. I am like, so beyond happy for you and it's well-deserved. So that's all I have to say. I'll let my other co-hosts kind of take the first question. No worries. <laughs> just asking, how did it feel to win the AEW Women's Championship? It was a surreal moment in my life, in my career, for me, for my family, for my friends, for my team, for my community. I still have people that, as an example, yesterday I was at the museum here, the only museum in Mexico that has Lucha Libre story, history. And I made a little um, live feed saying that I was going to be there uh, today. And literally these two guys, these two twins, they got out of work. They didn't even tell their boss. They I told you guys my internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work through it. We got you. <laughs> Is that Mexican internet right now? Um, yeah, like I was telling, sorry. So these two guys, twins, young guys, left to see if they could go to the museum because they were like, they work like a block from there. And they literally are shaking when they're like shaking my hand. And they're like, you don't understand how important you become an arrest uh, a champion was for us like when you won us we hugged and we started crying we are so proud of you and it's like constantly everywhere I go in the United States to do signings to meet new people meet new, young girls like they pour their hearts and they tell me how important this win was for them or like the significance of somebody that worked so hard to you know to break glass ceilings into into become a champion then they feel like they are like part of this journey and it's amazing so um i'm super happy that i am i am here today you know as a champion and i'm here today in my hometown um as a champion and making history forever 
Well, first, I wanted to say, like, I was extremely happy <laughs> you won the championship. I tell everybody all the time how awesome and amazing you are in the ring. And so for me, I was like, yes, finally, we get to see her do her thing as AEW Women's Champion. So my question for you is, you have a lot of history with Serena Depp going back to NWA. So how does this feel going into Double or Nothing with her being your opponent for the title? For me, it is very important that uh, she understands because I feel like in the last, uh, I will say seven months, her transition here, her uh, development as this professor of professional wrestling has started, right? Uh, um, I feel that she needs to understand that I'm a different animal right now in May 2022, that I am not the same person she faced two years ago during COVID when she took the NWA championship away from me, that I'm not the same person in October 2020 when she faced me again. That was the last time we were in the ring together. That I have become a more confident, a more, uh, a better wrestler and a better woman. And I think that, um, that this match is going to be so intense because like I said on Wednesday, I drove to see her back and forth 16 hours just to see her wrestle because that that what she was doing eight years ago that's exactly what I envisioned myself doing in the ring being a technical wrestler being one of the best in the world and now it's a different story but during double or nothing this match is gonna prove a lot of things for a lot of people and especially I personally feel like we have an opportunity to show the world what a real women's wrestler, wrestler looks like. So with that being said, we have double or nothing coming up. Now, uh, we, you know, we don't even have to, we won't rehash the whole match that you have with Britt Baker, which was an amazing match. Like how, as far as preparing, um, is it is it gonna be, is it gonna top that match? Like there, you, you had, like that was such a great match. And I think this is gonna be a great match as well, but what's the game plan in getting ready for this match? I think for me, I have to do a lot of, I have to do a lot more studying. Like I, in this specific match, um, I study all my opponents, but on this one, I'm putting a lot more effort and uh, I'm going back and, and watching all her matches with Sheeta, all the matches that we had together, all the matches that she had in the last, you know, seven or eight months, because I want to make sure when I get in the ring, I'm completely ready for the style of wrestling that she's bringing to the table. You guys know when I'm in the ring, I can do high flying, I can do like striking, I can do technical, but I want to show that side of Thunder Rosa that a lot of you guys don't get to see that often. That side that I know that made me who I am right now. That when I went to Japan, when I was uh, a Green Hornet and I had no experience whatsoever, my technical level saved me and it helped me to learn a lot more. But this is, Every time you see Thunder Rosa in the ring, you see a different side. And this is another side that you haven't seen. It's not only I'm going to bring so much passion and, 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 um, and grit. It's like you're, you're going to see all like a different type of aggressiveness that I haven't brought in the ring. That doesn't involve a chair. That does not involve a, you know, a table. It's just pure technical wrestling. But if there's a chair and there's a table, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not going to say no to it. So. <laughs> you already know. So kind of switching gears, um, mm -hmm. you've been in a lot of locker rooms and a lot of companies. How is this locker room, this AEW women's locker room, different from previous ones? It's a very diverse locker room. Um, we have very, very young women in here. And then we have, you know, uh, some of the most experienced women in the business. And uh, um, I personally love working with Mercedes Martinez. She's one that brings so much to the table. And anytime I have a question, like personal or professional, she's always open to help anyone. Um, I think um, like uh, on Wednesdays, we a lot of us train with Dustin. Um, we're really trying to help each other to like elevate each other. Uh, when when we have issues on the ring, when we have issues and certain stuff, uh, and we brainstorm and, and you know and different things, I, I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. And um and also we are encouraged to uh, to bring some of the stuff that are not necessarily like in ring abilities. It's other uh, things that we can bring to enhance uh, the the division. So uh, I've been able to do a lot of really cool stuff in the company as as you know 
uh, with my social work, with everything else. And, and I don't know, I, I, I like it. One of the things I appreciate you are uh, as a fan is like you always showcase your culture and your style yes. and your gear and your entrances. <laughs> and so I think that's like such amazing when people can do that and kind of show the world, this is where I come from. This is part of me. And so what goes into like when you're choosing gears, especially for certain shows or you have like an entrance worked out, what goes through your mind when you're trying to pick those specific things? During well, the I want to, I want to point out, and I want to point out this really well, AW as a company has allowed me to be myself um, from, mm -hmm. you know, from head to toe. Um, like, like, for example, yesterday we had a little video that we, we did for Cinco de Mayo. And it was like a conversation that I had with uh, one, of, one of the people there. And they encouraged me to do this. And Tony was 100% with it. I was like, yeah, I think it's a great idea. We, you know, it's like those little things that you will think, okay, come on, you know, who cares? No, you, you care as, as, as a Mexican, uh, Mexican American, I want people to know about Cinco de Mayo. I was here in Mexico to, uh, yesterday and it was Cinco de Mayo. I was like, ain't nobody drinking margaritas and, and, you know, eating guacamole. <laughs> it was like another day, but in America it was different. So with that being said, um, me representing my culture, it's, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like self-discovery for myself too. I mentioned this and uh, TK, you know, you know this about, about, about me. I said it before for such a long time when I first started, I did not want to accept that I, I people are going to, we're going to see me as a, as a Mexican, as a Mexican individual. I wanted to be seen as a wrestler, but being a Mexican American is part of me and I can't get rid of that. So it's either you neglect it for the rest of your life and be miserable or you accept it and embrace it. So in the last couple of years that I have fully accepted where I come from and like the beauty of my culture, I think um, it had allowed me to develop all these really cool costumes and bring them to life. Um, I, I think one of them, and, and you know, I never thought I was going to wear a Tejana or like a, a cowboy hat <laughs> ever when I was younger and I love it. I, I, you know, I rock that every time I can now. I mean, I live in Texas now, so I'm embracing the Texan part of me and, and I'm going to bring in more and more and more because it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's sexy. And it's like, again, it's, it's part of the ranchero or the, the regional mm -hmm. part of Tijuana. Cause a lot of people in Tijuana, they like regional music and they dress like that. And it just brings another different flair to, to Thunder Rosa and for double or nothing. I can't tell you how amazing my gear is going to look. You're going to be like, oh my God, she really came to Vegas. Like that's, I never done before. And I'm, I'm going Vegas style and it's going to be very um, Hispanic based. And people are going to be like, holy Jesus, she's ready to kill. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't wait to see. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be amazing. And what I do, and what I do love is that it's not the stereotypes like, you know, you bring so many different, very, like, we're not a monolith across any culture. So it's nice to see that it's like, it's more than, you know, the stereotypes that we've seen in the past as far as wrestling. So kudos to yourself and AEW for showcasing that. Because there are people who don't no, get to interact. Thank you for noticing that. That's a, that's a conversation I just had with my my media guy and with my husband about how important it is for me as a Mexicana or as a Mexican American. Uh, to bring what the differences of who a, a Mexican American really is. Because for many, many years, you know, we were uh, kind of like thought of what a Mexican American person talks and like how they think and how they dress. But we all dress differently. We all have, mm -hmm. you know, come from different backgrounds. And and like I said, just being able to express myself in that way with my with my gear, with my face paint, with you know, the music with, with everything is different. Like when I won the championship, I never thought I was going to dress like a mariachi, but you know, that's part of my culture. And we bring mariachi women with me in the, in the back and it was beautiful. So uh, mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm at Tejana. So, <laughs> and then the, the other, the, in Orlando, I was a Aztec warrior. So it's just like really, really cool. I am mm -hmm. able to see all different things. Yeah. Shout out to your husband as well. Kudos to your husband. <laughs> um, he's amazing. He's, you know, when, when you're super busy, he steps in and puts us together. So shout out to him. I want to show him some love and give him some flowers too, but let's, uh, hop over to mission pro wrestling. Um, yeah. they're like this, when it was announced and what it is and the shows and all this stuff and just showcasing women, um, just on a regular basis 
This is absolutely amazing. Um, so what's the, you know, you, you, you hit a certain level thus far. So what's the game plan for Mission Pro now? We, we have a lot of talks and uh, we are like in the process of redeveloping some stuff that we want to make sure is going to take us to the next level. I think um, we are like in the, in the cusp of doing something bigger, but we have to make sure everything we have, you know, where we cross our T's, you know, and the eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So uh, we're working really hard on you know, amping up production value, um, the promotional part, like um, I have brought some people in into our team and we're, they're doing things that I personally didn't think about doing, but it's, it's given another perspective to, to what we're doing as, as, as a company. And, um, and it's so important that we, we continue to do that because a lot of people don't necessarily watch the whole entire show, but they see the video packages, they see the commercials, mm -hmm. they see that, you know, they see us as a real company and that's what we want to make sure. Um, a couple of days ago, somebody said that we are like the new shimmer of women's professional wrestling. But I think uh, we are different than shimmer because of who we are, like just as, as women, like it's run by women. And I want to make mm -hmm. sure that whoever we're bringing into the team, they understand the importance of the, uh, of, of the company as, as, as a run, women run company this is it's very very hard to find something like this yep. you know business owned by women and 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 then we have a voice and then we can actually um you know create something different and um there was another person that uh and actually Yamel uh told me that for him watching this show is so important because he feels that um we don't we don't sexualize our women we allow them mm -hmm. to be themselves at all times we depending on you know the age where they come from whatever we don't judge and and they can see that through through the uh, you know through the tv that that they are themselves and they love that part of mission pro wrestling and diversity like very much so very much diverse i love that part too um we have a lot of latinas we have a lot of african americans uh we've been trying to bring more of um uh it, but it's kind of hard because we haven't been able to find a lot of Asian Americans to come in and represent. We have a two or three that come from time to time. Um, I have a lot of young girls, very, very young roster. And in the fact that we're able to influence them in, in a positive way and teach them, I don't want to say, say quote unquote the right ways, but the right way to, you know, deal with their business as, as a woman in, in, in professional wrestling. And, and, you know, to come with your high with your head high and, and be proud of what you do and, and be proud of being an athlete because at the end of the day, that's who you are and a brand. As mm -hmm. you guys know, I created my own brand and I work very hard and continue to work very hard to continue with my brand and, and just, you know, to respect that because we are entrepreneurs and, and, and you should think like that to be successful. The way you're speaking of women's wrestling and the way you're, you're speaking about Mission Pro is like, you're so confident in yourself and these girls are going to get that from you. Um, where does this confidence come from? Like, where is it? Girl, because <laughs> I want some of that. <laughs> from a lot of self-work. Um, <laughs> I was not confident at all when I was, some of those girls are 18. I don't know. First of all, I don't even know how they can handle it, being 18 and in, in the business. Like, I didn't even know who the heck I was when I was 18, let alone trying to be in a business that was, that is dominated by, by males. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it came from a lot like, you know, trial and error. And, and for me, it is very important to be and to show the confidence because that's when, when I come in the room, I demand, I command attention just by walking in. And when you're confident, people are afraid of what you can bring to the table, but it's that's on them if they're, they're, you know, they're afraid. I, this is just who I am. And, and and you have to show that for people to believe what you're what you're working on and what you're selling. And I'm selling women's professional wrestling. And I'm telling you, this is one of the best things in the world. And they should we should have more opportunities in the independent. We should have more opportunities in in um in regular TV because we can perform, as you guys can see. We have mm -hmm. had some of the most awesome matches on national TV, and they were brought by women. I can tell you again how many people have come to me and said that. The storytelling that we we told 
multiple times. It's well, some of the best matches they ever seen in their lives. And they've been re- they were wrestling friends for 40 years and they've never seen something like that before. It can be done if it's done correctly. Mm-hmm. Like I said, but you have to be confident that you can perform and you can do it. So, and, and sometimes, yes, you're going to mess up and some, and, and, and some days you're going to feel like you're not that confident, but you have to keep going. You have to remind yourself what a badass of a person you are all the time that you can have a humongous platform and you can bring that and show that to the world. Like for me with, with my YouTube channel, that's what I show even more. I give them like, uh, a little entrance to my to my life to my world and I talk about my ups and downs and I, I talk to them about you know my failures and things that you know irk me but I show them too like the journey of that that is important for you to continue to build your confidence and when things don't go your way you have to work harder to get to the result but you have to you know you have to believe in yourself number one uh with the concept of the forbidden door which is like a big thing with aew is there somebody even though you've wrestled so many different women and you were in so many different companies but is there somebody that you would like to wrestle to come through that forbidden door and set foot in the ring with you yes that's another woman that she was a uh an inspiration to me before i became a wrestler uh sarah stock she was a coach before, and now she's, she's, I thought she was retired, but she's wrestling back again. So I would love to have a match with her. Um, Fabi Apache, I was supposed to wrestle her before and I was not able to. She's, she's one of the best in the world. She's my, she's, she's my son's favorite wrestler. So I think he will get a heart attack if he sees me wrestling her. <laughs> um, let's see. From the Forbidden Door. Um... I don't know. I think um, there's so many I can't even mention, but those are like that one. Sarah Stockton will be like my number one, probably because she's just such a great athlete. Now, before we get out of here, you have done a lot, um, so much in, in your career thus far. Um, what is the game plan? Like what, what, cause you know, I know you want to do cage matches. Um, you want to do Iron Man matches, uh, intergender matches. Like what, what is the stuff that you want to accomplish in 2022? I will definitely, I will definitely, definitely, definitely look to do an Iron Woman match. I know Serena mentioned that last week, and I will second that. Um, it hasn't been done at AEW, and you know I like to be some of those, you know, people that like to break barriers and be the the first, the first one to be part of that. You know, um, I would love to do one of those. Uh, I don't know. Um, I would like. To do like a men match, like uh, blood, like blood and guts match. I think that would be so much fun with like <laughs> all the women that we have. We have really good women in our roster. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I, I'm kind of crazy, so I like to do that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> I definitely would like to do more community activism in my city of Tijuana in terms of uh, professional wrestling. Just in- encouraging women to do uh, to get involved in professional wrestling. And hopefully bring them to the United States so they can work here. They can work uh, out there and see the difference in things uh, because it's so important that people see that there's options and there's choices. And knowing that there's a choice for them, that's when you know you can become successful. Um, And I don't know. I have a lot of plans with with Mission Pro to like do more community stuff, either raise money for kids raise money for women's organizations right now um, because of the you know current situation that we're living in. I think it's important that we continue to support women and families. Um, and uh, I had like, I had one thing I want to do this year before the end of the year, which is very dear to me. You guys know that I adopted my dog Drago mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Um, I want to create a comic for Drago and like the proceeds will go to uh this this place that I've been following for a couple months and then that helps, uh, you know, dogs that are stray or they're abandoned by their owners so they can be fostered and they can be saved. So I would love to donate the money for, for that because having a pet, um, it, it changes your life and, and, and it gives you so much love. So that's, that's one thing I would like to do and more collaborations, uh, with, with companies so we can bring awareness with so many things that are happening in the world. So I'm just like, my head is everywhere. But it's like with wrestling, I can tell you, I would like to have some like first time ever matches, some crazy matches, um, 
some uh, international work. Uh, and then outside of that, like I would like to do more uh, uh, collaborations and awareness in, in the community in, in San Antonio here in Tijuana and more national stuff. So it's going to happen. <laughs> It's all going to happen for you. And last question, is there anything you want to tell Serena before your final words to her? What, what do we have to say? <laughs> My final words for Serena. There's a lot of mutual respect between you and I. We've known each other for many, many years. You have been pivotal for me to become who the best version that I be became. But there's a point in where respect goes out of the window and it's just about who is the best in this division and in the world and that is not you serena that is me Ooh, goosebumps all right before uh just kate for people who aren't following you because y'all should be following thunderosa but if they aren't where can they find you well they can find me on my youtube channel every week every saturday um Santa Rosa on YouTube, the taco vlog that comes every Tuesday that I am very popular right now. And I'm eating tacos all over the country. Uh, <laughs> it's every Tuesday at 3 p.m. You can also find me on Twitter and you can also find me on Instagram at Santa Rosa 22. And if you want to get more like ex inclusive, ex exclusive stuff, Brand Army, that is sandrosaofficial.com. Right there, I answer to all my, my messages. Uh, we send videos. You guys can see my one hour and a half long YouTube uh, vlogs because we put everything in there and also the um, the taco vlog. So I'm, I'm actually a, a fun person to follow. I'm pretty random. So yes, yes for randomness. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I, I wish you the best of luck on your match. I mean, I think we all know the outcome, but you know, like I said, for y'all who are just watching, put some respect on Thunder Rosa's name. That's Thank all you. I gotta say. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Take care. Oh my God, Thunder Rosa is, um, like I said, when I when I say put some respect on Thunder Rosa's name, like I, I mean it. And the reason be, being is that she's been on her show about four or five times and it's like every time um, cause her career is like under 10 years and every time I see her, um, the hard work that she puts in, but it's just like, she's taking these like huge steps. Um, and it's just so amazing to see her career and her journey and just to see, you know, her being the AEW women's champ is just like everything just well-deserved and something different. Um, so I am like beyond happy for her. I'm glad that we got to interview her, um, at this stage of her career. Uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> um for again i talked about the time i love thunder rosa um even when i had to do the top uh five which is never five but when i did the top five article uh it was just like to sit and figure out like what do you put at the top five with somebody who does so much uh in general just for her career but for other women in wrestling i i, I just had this conversation yesterday in a different uh show and i was saying uh, to my friend, I think people forget how important women wrestling is and mm -hmm. that women do watch wrestling. We are here, we are watching and we're working in wrestling and we're behind the scenes in wrestling, but we love having the main events where women is main eventing and showing us just how great they are. And so for somebody like Thunder Rosa, who's also making sure she can do her part to showcase women, it's just very, you know, there's not too many people, unfortunately, there's not too many situations where it's just an all women's um, organization or promotion just promoting women's wrestling. And so just off that alone, and then to include what she's done by herself, it's just like amazing. And so I'm so glad again, everybody knows how I felt about her winning that title. <laughs> so I was super happy that she got the title. You know, I hope they get, she gets to keep it for a really long time. And, you know, I'm just excited to see what she's able to do next. Yeah, I feel like my voice, Kat. I, as, as a Mexican woman, uh, seeing, Thunder Rosa is like everything and seeing her rep our culture is amazing to see and I I am very excited to see what her outfit is at Double or Nothing because I will mm -hmm. be there you guys will hear me scream and I will be like <laughs> I knew something was gonna be good I knew it's gonna be good I'm excited I just she means a lot to women's wrestling 
the Mexican community, women, just in general. So this is very exciting and I'm so happy for her. I am too. So for the panel question, we'll make it Thunder Rosa uh, related. Um, so she's going to be battling with Serena. She had a great match with uh, Britt Baker. But who do you like? Who would you like to see her have a match with? And it doesn't have to be like promotion attached that you feel like it's going to be. I feel like her and Britt, that's like the, the standard. So that will be either equal to that or better. Who would you like to see her have a match with? Uh, <laughs> maybe Asuka. Ooh. Mm. Um, I, you know, I love Asuka in WWE, but I'm thinking of like when she was before WWE and how hard hitting, how badass she was. Not that she's not badass in WWE, you know, in her NXT run, who will tell people otherwise, but just she's such a phenomenal wrestler. And so for somebody who also can be very hard hitting and very serious when necessary, and for somebody, again, she's also very about her culture as well. And then for somebody like Thunder Rose, I think that will be like an amazing match. I don't know if they had matches before. I don't think they have, but um, I would love to see something like that. Just very two really like awesome women who we know is going to put on a show. I would love to see that. Okay. Uh, the first thing that popped in my head is like, I mean, it's any promotion where, you know, there's a forbidden door now. I would say Charlotte and mm. Thunder, you know, Charlotte is the pinnacle of WWE. You know, I feel like Thunder Rosa, she says she's the foundation. So I, I would like to see that. But so many, like Io Shirai would be amazing. So I, there's so many options. <laughs> um, the first person who came to my head was Trisha Dora. Ooh. Yeah, I feel yeah. like um, I don't. There's I, there is something that and and uh, Thunder Rosa talked about this on um, oral oral sessions, the show, um, Renee's show. Um, how there was like that combination of like the emotion involved in that match, and I feel like just going back to Trisha Dora's like Iron Man, Iron Man woman intergender match. Like, I feel like they will both bring out something different in each other. Um, and that's the only person I like when I, so for you guys, cause I didn't really introduce this, this segment of the show. The panel question is just for you guys to get to know us, get to know like, you know, what's operating in our head, fantasy bookings, all that stuff. And so um, like, when I think of that, like I get good, like, I want to see that. Like, uh, let's, let's figure out and make that happen. If it, it already hasn't happened already, um, but that's the person I feel like they'll 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 beat the crap out of each other and it'll be amazing. So um, you know we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, so Alicia, you are going down to double or nothing. I haven't decided if I am going down. Um, I will be at one of the AEW shows, but you know, <sighs> life life is, life is life is a lot. <laughs> um, but um, with that with that all being said, thank you guys so much for joining us, Alicia. Where can everybody find you? Oh, you can find me everywhere at Al underscore two underscores. Yeah, uh, Kayfabe Queens podcast uh, will be revamping very soon. That's where you can find me. And Miss oh, Katrina? and Wednesdays. And when? Oh yeah, um, I, I almost. <laughs> and Wednesdays. Yes. We have a lot of shows Wednesdays. going on. Dynamite Ooh. after show, Dynamite Dolls, Turnbuckle Glam, all of the things. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere on In Cat We Trust. The E is a three on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, if you are on TikTok, definitely check out Women's Wrestling Talk TikTok as I've been running it. And I, it's been really like crazy how quick one clip got as many views as dead and got like 400 followers in a very short span. And so I'm going to try my best to post uh, clips from interviews there. And if there's any behind the scenes, which I'm hoping to kind of get people to know us more as hosts, I would like to put it up there just to kind of get a little bit insight to who we are as people. That's not just talking wrestling. Also, I am on the show on Thursdays with Stephanie for NXT, NXT UK, and there should be a show on Saturday. We did not figure out what it's called yet. <laughs> so hopefully by that point we will have it. And we're also talking wrestling and I guess like MLW and other independent companies on Saturday. So you can catch me in all those places there. Yes, 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 guys. We, uh, for you guys who haven't or who have been following us or haven't been following us, this is not the only thing that we do. We have so many shows. We are exclusively live on Twitch. So if you want to see us live with after shows, post shows, all that good stuff, please go and check out our Twitch channel. And what I mean by that, I'm going to see if I can remember all the shows because there are a lot. So Monday, we have an after show. 
definitely go and check that out. Uh, Wednesday, we have uh, we have our Dynamite Dolls. Um, we also have, we have another show on Wednesday. Is it? No, I think that's the only one on Wednesday. I might be wrong. On uh, Thursday is a packed day. We have our news. We also have news on Monday uh, with Nikki Bougie. Thursday, we also have our impact after show. Um, we have a new show debuting. This is an exclusive, y'all. Next Thursday, Creep Squad, which is going to be, the host is going to be Faye Jackson. And if you all don't know Faye, it's going to be a whole thing exclusively on Twitch. You won't be able to see it anywhere else. It won't be on YouTube uh, because it's going to get uh, pretty spicy. So definitely check that out. Um, on Friday, then we have our SmackDown after show. Then we have Turnbuckle Glam. And then we have our indie show on Saturday. And I think I might be missing a few. But that is the lineup. Um, definitely check out all our social media to catch up on all that WW Talk Pod. Um, check out our website, www.talkpod.com. And you can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. Till next time, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Women's Wrestling Talk the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.